We've been hearing quite a bit recently regarding DLSS, which stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us. Okay, but seriously, why so much commotion? What exactly about DLSS makes it so important for RTX graphics cards? Well, it'll be easier to break this one down on a component by component basis. Welcome to Minute Science. Super sampling, the second half of that acronym, is just a fancy term for scaling a game to a resolution beyond what your monitor supports. So for example, in GTA 5, I can enable frame scaling, that's just another term for super sampling, and run a resolution that is twice the density of my 1440p gaming panel. In this case, that's 5120 by 2880 pixels. But why would I want to scale a resolution beyond what I'll actually end up seeing on screen, right? I can't change my screen's resolution unless I completely swap monitors, so... Why, why would I do that? A few reasons, actually the biggest is because frame scaling can smooth out to a degree sharp edges similar to how anti-aliasing works. So since pixels are squares, round and diagonal edges can look choppy, a bit like stairs, and super sampling can in some cases smooth them out, though I'd almost always advise enabling AA for a similar effect instead since it tends to have less of an impact on the average frame rate. So that's what super sampling is, I discuss it more in this video here, but what about the deep learning part of DLSS? Why is that important and why is it necessary for ray tracing? Well, to start, all deep learning really means, it's basically marketing jargon at this point because a lot of people use it, that and AI, is that something in the background is improving with time. It's studying a pattern, repetition, it's trying to predict it better in the future. And when seen in the context of NVIDIA graphics cards, deep learning describes the platform's ability to optimize and smooth out the experience in game. It's done by running the game in question over and over and over again until the neural network learns so much about a game's physics, layout, shadows, composition, that it actually actually improves the user experience with time. The process actually involves NVIDIA's own data center, so the more information that is fed to them, the better optimized, in theory, the graphics card becomes with respect to that particular title. And this is done on a game-by-game -game basis. It takes a lot of time for these servers to study these games and predict them better. And the super sampling aspect of DLSS is a requirement for these data centers to dissect unique high-resolution scenes, break them apart, study them, and optimize the most visually vital aspects of of them. So most games can load enough into VRAM to the point where calling a particular instance is near effortless and instantaneous. It's why memory bandwidth matters and why you'll probably never hear it labeled as a true bottleneck. And to the extent that memory isn't the bottleneck, the GPU can, for the most part, solve the problems in question and push them in, in, in a well, fairly timely manner. I mean, if you had any delays, that would reflect in your frame rate, right? It's why parallelization is emphasized in the graphics card market, and that's typically why we have thousands of CUDA cores and stream processors occupying our NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards. But what if those GPUs become too bogged down with computational workloads? What if the frame rate when enabling something like DXR drastically lowers? Sound familiar, Battlefield 5? When something as taxing as ray tracing is turned on via DXR in a game like Battlefield 5, the graphics card in question needs every bit of help it can get. Yes, even the RTX cards. Real-time ray tracing calculations, to the extent that they aren't predicted in advance with AI, are just too intense at this point. And the lack of RT core optimization really doesn't help. I mean, how many games right now support DXR? One. So NVIDIA has been seeking to solve this problem with legit servers whose job it is to dissect these games and predict events far in advance, thus easing the load on the GPU in real time and improving the user experience. The Tensor Core is vital, by the way, for this implementation, and that's why only RTX cards to date have access to this feature. So, in a nutshell, DLSS frees up additional graphics card resources for additional rendering. A byproduct of this is usually an increase in frame rate and a bump in visual clarity, which is why it's so important with something like DXR because DXR works the opposite by dropping your frame rate for those added reflections and more realistic just verbiage in game. Although a major downside of this is that to date only a handful of games, about 25 or so, actually plan to support DLSS. So fans of NVIDIA's Turing architecture will need to keep their fingers crossed in hopes that developers catch on and implement these capabilities in future titles. In fact, I think the number of games that support both DXR and DLSS, or that even will in the coming months or years, is five. I want to say it's like five games. So. Yeah, they better catch on soon. With that, if you'd like to contribute to the channel and become a member, you can do so by clicking the blue icon down below. I do appreciate that. You can buy merch, similar to the shirt I wore in the last video. You can subscribe if you're feeling super fancy, and I'll catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.